What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App, and today I'm going to show you how to create image lists in Figma in accordance with Google's material design guidelines. If you haven't worked with material design before, I recommend first of all watching the other videos in this tutorial series and also looking at Google's material design website, which I've linked in the description below. There are four types of image lists we need to talk about. The first image list type is standard. It's good when you have items that are of equal importance. A good example of this might be the photo gallery that you have on your phone. Another image list type is quilt this will emphasize certain items over others in a collection. Maybe it's a new item that was recently released or something that you want to feature. Another image list type is masonry. This is best when you're browsing uncropped pure content. An example of this might be when you're looking at a series of photographs from different photographers on their website. Finally, there's woven image lists. This is best when you're browsing pure content. An example of this might be a collection of photographs from an interior designer. All of the lists that I showed previously are made up of the same basic component. It's an image container that can optionally have text labels, icons, iconography and text protection. To start off, we're going to design this basic component and then assemble it into the different types of grids I showed before. To start things off, I grabbed an image of a bird from Unsplash. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in a frame. We'll call this frame image. Let's set it to be 200 pixels wide and 150 pixels high. Let's add some text here. We'll say winter bird. Let's change this to SF Pro and then we'll switch the type to semi bold. We'll make this 15 pixels, 20 pixel line height and 0% letter spacing. We will put this at the top. We'll have that match the width of the frame and then we'll add eight pixels of spacing between these two things. And then finally we need to add our optional icon. I'm going to type the word star. And then I'm going to go to font awesome. Let's switch this to font awesome pro. I'm going to set the width of this to 20. Let's center that and we'll move that over here. And then let's set this of eight pixels of spacing between the icon text and then let's hit shift a and we'll set this to fill the container and this will be fixed we'll call this info and then let's grab both of these things hit shift a this will fill the container and we'll set this also to fill container, but this will stay as hug. That way, if I take this component, let's change it to 300 wide and only 100 pixels tall, it'll crop accordingly. Now, this will normally be on a white background, so I'm actually going to take this text, change it to that dark gray. Let's take this icon and have that be an off gray like this. If we put this all on a white background, you'll see it looks like that. Let's rename this image and then we'll create a component. I am going to duplicate this, detach it, and then I'm going to take this info here and I am going to put it within the image frame and I'm going to add eight pixels of spacing on each side so the max width of this will be 184 but we'll set this to fill and then let's take this information add eight pixels of horizontal padding and eight pixels of vertical padding and then let's make sure that this width is all the way from the left to the right we'll set this to scale and then this will be fixed to the bottom and then if I take this image card and resize it you'll see this sticks to the bottom the last thing I need to do here is add a fill let's make this black but then let's have it be lower opacity 40 pixels should be enough let's change this text to white we'll change this to a lighter gray. We'll actually make this a little bit dark. Let's set it to 50%. So I have another component here, an image component. I'm going to make a component out of this as well. Now that I have both of these, let's combine them as variants. And we will call this image and then this property will be called text protection. And we'll click onto this one where there's text protection enabled and we'll call this true. And when there's no text protection enabled, we'll call this false. I'm going to take this component, duplicate it, move it out here. And you can see that it swaps really easily depending. I'm actually going to increase this to 70 and I am going to add an additional effect here. Click effects and we'll add a background blur and then you can see if you look in here, there's a slight blurring that's happening. So I could even reduce this opacity a little bit and you're not gonna be able to see the background clearly because it's blurred. Now that I have my image component, I'm going to go ahead and make my first list type, which is just that standard list. The thing I'm going to do to create a standard list is take this element here and I'm going to duplicate it and put it four pixels to the right. And then I will apply auto layout. Let's call this row. Then I'm gonna select both of these images and change this to fill container and fill container. Let's duplicate this again. And then you can see it resizes automatically. We don't want it to look like this. So let's change that back to 606 so that all of these stay that same one by one. I'm gonna duplicate this again and add four pixels of spacing between. And let's hit shift A here. And we'll call this list but then we have to go back to both of these row components and we have to change this to fill container and this to fill container. Then if I click and drag this, I can resize it and everything will respond dynamically. Let's add another row here and then we're actually going to increase this a bit so everything is square and we'll call this standard list and I will create a component 
out of that. And there I have my standard list component. Now that I have my standard list, I'm going to make a quilted list. So let's take another image card and we'll set the width to 404 by 404. Let's duplicate that and give it four pixels of spacing in between, but we'll set the width of this to 200 by 200. And then we will duplicate that here. And then we will take this and we will make this 404 by 200. And then you can see I have a little bit of a quilted layout here. So I'm gonna take these, apply auto layout, and I'm going to set these to fill container, these to fill container. And I'm gonna take both this frame and that frame, and then I'll select fill container and fill container for all of those. Then finally, I'll apply auto layout here, and then I'll click both this large image and this series of images and set fill container and fill container. Now, if I take this list, and resize it, everything resizes dynamically. But I don't wanna stop there, so let's take all of these things in frame three. We're gonna duplicate that and have it be four pixels from the bottom, and then I am going to move this to the right. Then I will take frame three and frame four, apply auto layout, I'm gonna take both of these and set this to fill container, and this to fill container, and then I will resize it accordingly. I'm going to call this quilted list and I'll create a component there. All right, so now I have my image component, my standard list, and my quilted list. Next, I'm going to create a masonry list. So first, let's take one of these basic images. Let's set the width by 200, 200, but then let's take another one of these and we'll move this to be four pixels below. And let's set the height of this to 300. And then, so we have another series of images over here that are again, four pixels away, but maybe both of these are 240 pixels high. And then maybe there's a third one. And over here, again, it's four pixels of spacing between them horizontally and vertically, but this might be 160 and this might be 300. So let's take all that. And then I'm going to apply auto layout to all of these vertically first. And then I'm going to select all of these image components and I'm going to set them to fill container, fill container. And I'm going to set these to fill their container horizontally, but be fixed vertically. And then if I apply auto layout to all these and set these to be fill container, both horizontally and vertically, I can take this and resize it horizontally. It's not resizing vertically because I set the vertical height of all of these to be fixed. I'm going to take this and call it masonry list. I'm gonna make that a component, make that and put it over here. The last component I'm going to make is our woven image list. So first I need to start off with a one by one image. So I'll set this to 200 by 200. And then we need a second image component that's five by seven. So let's set this to 50 and 70 to start. Then we'll change this to 200 by 280. So that's five by seven. And for woven lists, I'm gonna turn text protection off. Then I'm gonna increase this by 28 so that the image is still one by one. And I'm going to increase this a bit so that this is still five by seven. Now that I have both of these, I'm going to add 24 pixels of vertical spacing between them. And I'm gonna take this, duplicate it, and I'll have there be 24 pixels of horizontal spacing here. What I've done here is I've taken this row of images and vertically aligned them, and this row of images and vertically aligned them. So if I take any of these elements and compare them with each other, they're 24 pixels of spacing away from each other. Now that I've got all that, I'm going to hit Shift A with these two, and Shift A with these two, and let's set this to fill container, and this to fill container. I'm gonna take all of these, and I'm gonna apply a frame, and I'm gonna make sure that there's 24 pixels of spacing from the right and left, and also from the top and bottom. So at the end, this thing will be 472 pixels wide and 633 pixels high. I'm going to add a white fill so you can see this better, and I'm going to call this woven list. And I will make this a component as well. Now that I have all of my image list components, the final thing that I need to do is go back to these original images and customize these components a little bit so that it's easier to toggle things on and off like the icons or the text. Go here, I'm gonna take both of these and I am going to duplicate them. The first thing that I will do is keep everything the same, but delete the icon, and then I will duplicate these again. And then I am going to actually have a version of this where I fully delete the text on both of them. And then I'm going to take this. Since this does have text protection, I'm going to say this is true. And since these do not have text protection, I am going to say false. And then I'm going to add an additional state. So if I go up here, let's add a property. We'll call it variant. We'll say icon, the default will be true. Create a property for all of these. Icon will be false. And then I'm gonna make one more final property. We'll call this text. And for all of these, since they do have text, we will call this true and we will call this false. 
Let's take this component here. If I turn off text protection, you'll see that it takes it back to that normal state. If I turn off the icon, it removes the icon. And if I turn off text, it just becomes a standard image component. The reason that I do this is then if I go into any one of these components, I can easily toggle things off on an individual basis. And there you have it. You now have an image component, a standard list, a quilted list, a masonry list, and a woven list that you can work with when putting together designs for both desktop and mobile. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of images, how to add them to Figma, and how to make components out of them that you can easily reuse throughout your designs. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.